Welcome to Inside the Criminal Mind, where we dive into notorious serial killers and their stories. I'm Katya. And I'm Dylan. Here we talk about the backstory and victims of the serial killer chosen for the episode. The Night Stalker, or Richard Ramirez, was a serial killer who went on a killing spree in the mid-1980s. He was born in 1960 as the youngest of five. His mom worked in the boot factory and his dad worked as a railway worker. Ramirez grew up in El Paso, Texas, the youngest of five children. When he was 12 years old, Mike, a cousin who was a veteran, showed him pictures of women he had allegedly raped, tortured, and killed. The following year, Ramirez was a witness to his cousin's fatal shooting to his wife. Around this time, he had started to become a delinquent and began breaking into homes and he dropped out of high school and moved to Los Angeles. He continued to commit crimes and was briefly in prison for stealing a car. After a while, his dad tried to punish him by chaining him up in a cemetery for a night. This must have had an impact on his psychology. We are now going to begin to dive into the murder victims and we apologize in advance for butchering names. His first murder was May Leung a nine-year-old who was beat and raped before stabbing her to death. He then hung her body from a pipe in April 1984. In June of that year, his Night Stalker killing spree began, and the crimes took place as follows. June 28, 1984. 79-year-old Jenny Van Cow was stabbed repeatedly while asleep in her bed. Her throat was cut so deeply she was nearly decapitated. March 19, 1985. Dale Yoshi... Okasaki, 34, was shot in his forehead. 22-year-old Maria Hernandez was shot but survived. On the same day as Veronica Yu was pulled out of her car and fatally shot twice. March 27, 1985, Vincent Charles Cesaro and Maxine Lavinia Cesaro were both shot. After Maxine died, Richard mutilated her body with a knife and gouged her eyes out. On May 14, 1985, Bill Doy was fatally shot and Lillian Doy was raped. May 29, 1985, Mabel Ma Bell, 83, and her disabled sister, Florence Nettie Lang, 81, were both bound and bludgeoned. Florence was choked with a cord and raped. They were found in a comatose story state, and Mabel died. May 30th, 1985, in 1985, Carol Kyle, 42, and her son were bound. Carol was raped. July 2nd, 1985, Mary Louis Cannon was stabbed repeatedly and died. July 5th, 1985, Whitney Bennett, 16, was attacked while sleeping, but as Richard tried to strangle her with a phone cord, he saw sparkles come off, which made him think Jesus was saving her, so he fled. She survived but had severe injuries. July 7th, 1985, Joyce Lucille Nelson, 61, was beaten in her home. Sophie Dickman was held at gunpoint and Richard attempted to rape her. July 20th, 1985, Mason and Leela Needing were attacked then shot. He continued to mutilate their bodies. On the same day, he shot Chenarong Covenant and raped Somkid Covenant. August 6, 1985, Christopher and Virginia Peterson were shot but survived. August 8, 1985, Sakina and El- Elias Obawath were both attacked, but with Elias fatally shot and Sakina raped. August 18, 1985, Peter and Barbara Pan were both killed and Barbara was raped. On August 24, 1985, Bill Carnes was shot but survived, and his fiancée, Ines Erickson, was raped. She was instrumental in giving a detailed description of Richard to the police. On August 30th, 1985, six days after his last known murder, Ramirez's name and photograph were released to the public. And the following day, a man recognized him and notified the police of where he was. A chase then ensued, and as Ramirez tried to steal a car, he was surrounded by a crowd and beaten until police arrived. A self-described Satanist, Ramirez made various references to Satan during his legal proceedings. He notably drew a pentagram on his palm. His trial began in early 1989, and in September, he was convicted of 13 murders and a a variety of other crimes. Nearly two months later, he was sentenced to death, with the judge stating that his crime showed cruelty, callousness, viciousness beyond any human understanding. 
Ramirez never expressed any remorse, and after receiving his sentence, he stated, Big deal, death always went with the territory. He was believed to have committed other murders and rapes, but was never charged for any additional crimes. While on death row at San Quentin State Prison, Ramirez was diagnosed with cancer. He died in 2013. According to court transcripts released at his trial, he said he was the killer and offered to kill himself. He told Detective George Thomas, I did it, you know. You guys got me, the stalker. Of course I did it. You know that I am the killer. So what? Give me your gun. I'll take care of myself. You should. I am a killer. So shoot me. I deserve to die. Well, that's going to wrap up this segment of Inside the Criminal Mind. Thank you for unveiling this episode's case with us. Catch us next week to talk about John Benet Ramsey.